This spring, I was looking for something new and challenging to build. And after a bunch of bench testing, I couldn't find something that I wanted to build over my ridiculously agile and powerful 3.5 inch scythe I designed last year. But then DJI released the O3 video system and made it compatible with my V2 goggles. So I wanted to give it a try. However, anything less than the flight experience I have with my scythe on the Vista would be disappointing. So I wondered if I could build something that flew similar on the O3 system. Challenge accepted. In this video, I'll take you on a ride after going over the requirements, design solutions, and specifications for the Helios. Recursion Labs For Science I started by setting some firm design requirements. Similar all-up white as my scythe, since it will be recording locally in 4K, I wanted the camera to have no props in view. True X design, because dead cats kinda suck. Soft mounted camera to resist jello, and no compromise to the durability. To meet the weight requirement, there was no way a stock air unit and camera would work, so I had to see if streaking naked was an option. I created this test setup and used high resolution thermal vision to baseline test the idle and armed thermals for the stock O3 air unit and camera. And then and stripped down the air unit to the boards and re-ran the test to see how long it would take to overheat. I then tested how much airflow was needed to keep the chips heat stable. I could probably make a video on this alone, but ultimately, I determined that a naked O3 air unit and camera was extremely viable and incorporated this airflow information in the design of the top stack. Next came the camera. It is very easy to strip down and became smaller and lighter than I expected. To meet the soft mount camera requirements with no props in view, I was inspired by my naked GoPro Scythe all TPU mount design who crafted a 45 degree armored housing that provided ample infill cushion around the camera to be able to eat a direct crash. With a shape designed to encourage rolling when taking an impact, that also provided a top fin for easy turtle mode crash recovery. I printed many iterations to figure out the most material and angles that could be used to maximize the protection in front of the lens without being seen by the wide FOV camera. I then printed and reprinted the TPU housing to determine the ideal type and amount of infill to use for the best impact cushion for the weight. This was 3D honeycomb infill with seven to 8% infill density. I cut off unnecessary plastic off the camera to save even more weight, but made two camera housing designs to allow for this configuration, or stock if I ever have one that I may want to recase. With the camera solved, the base plate design was significantly simplified, allowing for an almost perfectly balanced TrueX design. I wanted to be able to mount most AIOs, so it supports both standard 20x20 and 25.5x25.5 boards. Since there are no front camera plates, I was able to make the arms shorter than the scythe, reducing the base plate weight and impact leverage from the arms. The top plate includes the unique 1.6 millimeter holes to mount the O3 air unit at the top, allowing for easy maintenance of the flight controller and air unit. The stock O3 antenna is heavy and massive, and with some research I found that inside is a PCB with dual V-shaped linear antennas. I wanted to test alternatives. I created this bench setup to conduct both range and penetration testing using various antenna configurations where I could compare the bit rate and cutoff distance. This again could be a video on its own, but ultimately, I discovered that two whip antennas had the exact same range as the stock O3 antenna, and was satisfied with the weight and size savings that this provided for this build, and went with them. I'd recommend this unless you're using the DJI 2.4 GHz control link. The low cost is an added bonus. Mounting the naked O3 was a bit of a challenge, mostly because the O3 connector cable is longer than it is on the Vista, and the minimum distance I could comfortably get away with was 5mm spacers. I managed to trim the SD card module down to less than a gram, but I decided to just use the onboard storage and offload the files to my phone or tablet on the field as needed. Stack screws are held in secure by metal nuts, which provided the perfect spacing to hold the antenna connectors in place. Since this design isn't height constrained by the front plates, the stack height can be increased if needed with longer standoffs. This means that a stock O3 air unit can be easily mounted with just four screws if desired, which I'll talk more about shortly. I replaced the stock camera cable with a much smaller 6mm variant to make the build cleaner and save on even more weight. I tested even more motor options, which I have yet to publish the results for, but I've opted to go with the same setup I determined to work best with the target all up weight, which is the T-Motor F1404 or 3800KV motor. Maybe one day I'll find something that works better. With the build done, I can now judge my success and test the weight. The core frame with steel hardware comes in at a promising 19.6 grams. Adding the camera, cable, and mount, we get 26.5 grams. With titanium hardware, the core lowers by 1 gram to 18.6 grams. With all titanium hardware, the dry weight including everything but the battery comes in at 95.3 grams, which made me do a little nerd dance around the lab, as this is almost exactly the same dry weight as my size. I previously concluded that the 60 gram 550 milliamp hour 4S battery is ideal for this setup, which brings the all-up weight to 155.9 grams. Hallelujah! 
but how does it fly? Holy shit. On paper, this should fly near the same as a Scythe, but the additional immersion from the O3 quality made it feel faster, even though it wasn't. Getting used to the 11 to 1 thrust to weight ratio on something so agile can take time, but I felt right at home here, and even copied the same tune as my Scythe, which I should probably retune at some point. Having all this thrust is very nice when you want to blip it, but even here I rarely go over 60% throttle outside of small bursts. Still going for the one quad fits all approach, I have a connector for an optional external GPS Nano M10 module that adds 3 grams of weight, which now I mount on the arms after some excellent experiments Momobrut did with his long range scythe he published in great detail on the Into FPV forums. I have the GPS connected to USB power, so I can connect the power externally over USB for the module to obtain satellite locks when the O3 is powered off, and hot swap it over to the LiPo battery with over 20 satellites when ready to fly. I will say that the O3 is absolutely perfect for casual long range fun flying, where I can just cruise around and look at stuff like a bird. I was able to go as slow or as fast as I wanted. The noise this thing produces is so quiet that I feel I can fly around without causing alarm or annoyance, allowing me to explore or dive things that I otherwise wouldn't on something larger. The GPS maintained rescue coverage even with some objects overhead, and when pulling out of a fully inverted dive, would re-establish lock fairly quickly. With the GPS mounted, I took it to an open field so I was comfortable going full chooch, and measured the top speed of around 190 kilometers per hour, with VBAT side compensation enabled. With it disabled, it could probably break 200 for a bit, but I'm not trying to break records here. Now what about the stock O3 air unit? I was curious and mounted it with 30 millimeter standoffs, which could potentially be made shorter. The dry weight increased 20% to 113.7 grams, which should be around 13% weight increase with a lipo. I took it for a spin, and it flew much better than I thought it would. I realized that this is probably the same weight as a scythe with a naked GoPro, which I really love flying once I get used to the extra weight, and rarely feel like I'm lacking power once I adapt it. So this is extremely viable. I focused quite a bit on trying to make the frame reasonably durable, and here you can see me in full shit pilot mode bashing this thing around. Sometimes the crash concerned me quite a bit, but outside of bent props, the only damage occurred over time to the carbon doing its job protecting the motors, which eventually chipped away. I added a bit of two-part epoxy, and it's as good as new, functionally anyways. But like I did with the scythe, I designed the Vanguard base plate where I selectively reinforced areas that would theoretically break first with enough stress, which comes in at around 3 grams heavier, and might make sense if the build is heavier, like on 1408 motors with larger batteries. Regardless, nothing is unbreakable, especially with naked boards. So does this replace the scythe? For some flying, yes, but I have four of them and it's not like the video quality is terrible in comparison. For some practice, racing, and flying where I want the best cinematic quality where I want a naked GoPro, they would still be my go-to. I'd also love to try racing one on HD Zero one day, like some others have. Like the scythe, I posted the Helios frame up on CNC drones if you'd like to try your hand at building one yourself, along with the TPU parts for download on printables. If you do make one, I'd really appreciate if you share the pictures and flight videos, as seeing them is very rewarding to me. It won't be long before more people realize that even if sub 250 gram wasn't an arbitrary legal barrier, that technology has progressed where light and agile 3.5 inch builds with a high thrust to weight ratio is amazing. And while I made a stupid lightweight 5 inch HD racer, I never fly it. Hopefully we can continue to push things even further.